No, the, the, the problem is that uh, we just had uh, a couple people and I was waiting uh, for a couple minutes to, to people to see it to join. OK, so OK, uh, OK, so we're going to start right now. OK, OK. OK, just uh, hold on. OK. All right. So um, well, first of all, thank you for attending to today. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to introduce you all the different solutions from the analytics point of view, video analytics, sorry, uh, point of view that we have for the um, hospital management and hospital uh, industry, let's call it. OK, so uh, my name is Alvaro uh, Mocholi. I'm responsible for international sales of the company Grecom Technologies and then um, what we're going to do is I'm uh, going to do a very brief introduction of our company and then we go straight into the uh, into the different solutions that we have. OK, so Grecom Technologies is a company that is specialized on developing real time analytics for uh, uh, for I mean, for thermal imaging is our biggest expertise. OK, so right now we have about 30 different solutions uh, which can cover a quite wide range of uh, uh, analytics lines. We export to 64 countries uh, right now. And the good thing about it is that everything that we sell is uh, has been developed by us. So we have our own R&D department. And then also, um, besides developing uh, new analytics and improving them, uh, also what we do is we, we do OM uh, solutions for some key clients also, OK? Uh, also, we have an integration department, which is uh, responsible for integrating all the different solutions with existing cameras on the market, and then also with existing VMSs or security systems. And then uh, we have a pre-sales and after-sales department, which is responsible for solving any possible or any potential problems that might show up with the analytics, like bugs, uh, communication problems, and so on. Okay. These are all the nine different lines of analytics that uh, we can offer right now. So we have solutions for perimeter surveillance. So we have solutions for safety, marine surveillance, traffic. Uh, we are very specialized on tunnels, on roads and railways, tunnels, uh, fire prevention on uh, forest and industrial scenarios. And then also we have healthcare solutions, automation. That is where we have more solutions developed, face recognition and forensic. OK. So on the um, most of the solutions that uh, we have, we offer is uh, we have uh, different solutions, but uh, I think the ones that uh, recently they are uh, receiving a lot of demand on is on the customer management or on the on the people attending to the uh, to the hospitals. Okay, so what are the most common problems that uh, people uh, approach us with is. Uh, First of all, they want to have a solution that can detect uh, that everyone that accesses to the hospital is wearing a face mask. Uh, a face mask. So uh, we have a solution for such, such an issue. Temperature control, especially on the emergency uh, gate. What they want to do is, I mean, as people walk into the uh, hospital or any of the gates, they want to screen their temperature and uh, make sure that the temperature is, uh, is okay. Also, they want to control the occupancy uh, levels on the waiting rooms, emergency rooms and restaurants, and also on the corridors. So to make sure that there is like uh, some social distancing and then there is no, the people are not gathering uh, too close to each other. And uh, um, like um, just to prevent from the COVID-19 uh, spread, okay? And then, uh, also, there is a very key, it was very important on the registration process. So what they want to do is they want to speed up, especially on the private hospitals. So what they want to do is uh, on the registration and also for the registration of external, the, uh, external uh, medical uh, registration. So um, basically the idea is, I mean, instead of like a, whenever the person walks into the uh, into the registration desk automatically with the face recognition. They want to automatically open up the file or open up the registration file in a way that all the data is already registered. So we can speed up all the 
all the uh, process in a way that the only thing that they need to um, to uh, check is that the security insurance policy is the one that they have registered and the treatment that they are working in for is authorized by the insurance company. OK, so also the queue management in a way that uh, whenever there is some some sort of congestion, we can open up a new uh, registration desk in a way that we can speed up all the registration process, not just on the check in, but also on the checkout. And then also one very um, something that uh, has been uh, demanding on recently is the uh, loyalty programs. That means uh, to all those uh, uh, clients or to all those people that uh, come or visit this hospital fluently or I mean um, quite often. I mean, uh, what they want to do is they want to give a special treatment in a way that uh, they can speed up things. Uh, they can give like a, maybe have like a VIP room where they have a special attention, like uh, some drinks, some coffee. And um, so they have like a special attention in a way that they can uh, promote a loyalty programs to all those clients that uh, uh, visit the, their facilities uh, uh, quite often. And then also for the employee control, access control, what they want to do is, I mean, sometimes they have problems with the uh, with the uh, authentication of credentials. So what they want to do is they want to have a check in and check out uh, through face recognition with this touchless, and then also it is quite accurate. Okay, and then um, they also want to have like the access reg registration and monitoring. Uh, within the premise. I mean, sometimes, I mean, people, uh, they walk through the hospital, they access to restricted areas, so they want to know how the people are moving inside their, their facilities and how much time they spend in each one of the facilities so they can control the time that they're spending on each one of the areas. Also, on the restricted areas, they want to have access control in a way that, for example, on COVID areas, intensive care, surgery rooms, or radiology, oncology and so on. So what they want to do is they want to make sure that the authorized people is just granted the access to those restricted areas. OK, so all this uh, is being done through the face recognition. OK, uh, what we do is we have a solution that we can guarantee a 99.87 percent of accuracy. This is has been uh, certified by the NIST, which is the National Institute for the Standards and Technology. And then also what we can do is we can guarantee the face recognition of 98.4 when people are wearing face masks. So it's a very accurate solution. Follows all the privacy regulations. So that is uh, all the data that is being saved. Uh, it is uh, well protected. It gets encrypted in a way that no one can access or share the information without the authorized credentials. It's a very fast uh, uh, solution, so we can detect the face in less than 100 milliseconds. It can work on premise. It can work on the cloud, or you can have like an, a hybrid uh, deployment, so you can have like a presence and so you can have like a server and hybrid working uh, simultaneously. And then also one of the competitive advantages that we have is that the uh, the processing requirements is about 20% less than our competing competing uh, solutions. This system can run on all the uh, processing, all the um, software, uh, uh, all the software uh, solutions like uh, Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, and also Android and uh, EOS. So on all the operating systems can work. And it's also we have APIs and SDKs available so we can uh, interact, interact with uh, existing VMSs or access control devices and so on. OK, so from the uh, for the healthcare industry, what can we offer? OK, so uh, from the face recognition on the monitoring point of view, we can have mass detection. So as I said before, we can guarantee 98.4% of accuracy. Social distancing is also, we can offer it. And then this is very, very important right now with the COVID situation, just to make sure that whenever we see that people are gathering too close to each other, uh, so we can uh, detect it, uh, generate an alarms, and then ask them to, to distance from each other. 
So also we can have like audience management, so heat maps or congestion predictions, so whenever on the queues, so we can uh, we can detect and then um, open up the new registration uh, lines, counting people. So we make sure that the people that is inside on a given area does not exceed the maximum level or the maximum number of people that is authorized to be inside that uh, given area. Direction and analysis, we can know how many people is in, how many people has come out, and then also identify the people that is in, identify the people that is out. Is out. All the solution is contactless, so you don't need like a, like a fingerprint or, or you don't need like, a, for example, a badges or or like a identification card. And then also we can have the multi-factor authentication. Uh, this is uh, we developed this especially for the those uh, the, those people that I mean are wearing uh, special equipment are pretty much fully covered and then also wearing glasses or protection glasses uh, a COVID uh, vest and or emergency vest so sometimes it's quite difficult to identify them so what we did is we divided kind of like a QR code that basically what it does it matches the face with the QR code and then if that uh, if we can match the face with the QR code, uh, uh, we can grant the access. From the facial recognition, uh, what we can offer is the access control, VIP recognition. Uh, also, we can uh, have the subscription and activation of new customers or suppliers in a way that once they get registered, they don't need to register again, so you will speed up the process uh, drastically. And then, um, also, you can have reconnection of suspects. I mean, you know that sometimes in hospitals that the sometimes there is a little bit of a conflict uh, whenever something goes wrong. So you can also identify those people before they get into the hospital. And then also, this is very important. I will show you a video later on, so we can uh, detect liveness and anti-spoofing notifications. So we can do with uh, 2D cameras. We can identify what is a real face and what is not a real face. So in a way that no one can um, who can can like uh, try to supplant or fool the system with a picture or with an image on a smartphone or on a tablet. And then from the analytics point of view, what we can do is we can do demographic uh, analysis so we can classify the people by gender, age, and then also we can have heat, uh, heat maps, queuing time, dual time, how much time the people spend inside the premise or inside a, like a medical uh, office. And then also we can have occupation panels, so we know exactly how many people is in, how many, how much more people can access to that given area. OK, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video on how we can uh, detect liveness and anti-spoofing. So here what you can see is um, whenever the system detects that is a real face, it will give you kind of like a, there is a green heart. So that means this is a real face. OK. And then whenever you use kind of uh, like a picture, automatically you will see that it comes a red heart. So that means that is not a real face, so it will not grant access. And also you use uh, like a smartphones images on videos on your smartphones automatically will detect it and then uh also with videos so you can see that the system is detecting And then this is the double authentication. So you see the badge corresponds to the image. So it grants the access. And then whenever you use a different badge, it doesn't. It doesn't Greckham Technologies, the, uh, the your partner in video okay. analytics. Then also we have like a security platform or, or VMS, okay, which is video management system. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, it's not a common one. I mean, as, as, as you know, most of the VMSs, what they do is they they uh, record all the data, all the video streams from all the cameras that are connected to the VMS, 
And then also what they do is uh, they save the database of all the alarms that the, the different analytics connected to the cameras are generating. But we go one step beyond on that. So what we do is we have here, besides recording and also saving all the events that the system is generating, we also can do a smart search and we can do forensic analysis of what, ha what is happening with all the cameras that are connected to the system. So what we can do is we can have a map view so we can position all the people that is moving within the field of view of the camera and then we can track them down. And also we have the uh, video view with the spotlight. So uh, this is powered by deep learning. So uh, here what we can do is uh, we can change the video streams uh, dynamically to bring uh, just relevance. So for example, imagine that uh, we are crossing the GS like for example, want to detect that people is accessing to a restricted area. So uh, when when the, the system detects that someone has access to that restri restricted area, automatically will pop up on the screen. So the, the person on the control center will, will be able to, um, to monitor that event, okay? Also, you have the smart search uh, tool. So you imagine that, for example, in a hospital, you have like around 2,000 cameras connected to the system and something uh, happened with a given person. What you can do is uh, upload into the smart search tool a face of that person and then search of that face through all the cameras that are connected to the system. So instead of going camera by camera, you just upload the face and automatically the system will be searching for that face within or with all the cameras that are connected. So that uh, reduces the searching time drastically. OK, so in just a matter of seconds, so you know all the cameras uh, that that person passed by will automatically will give you the clip or the video stream of that person. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, you have the occupancy counting, so you can know how many people is inside the premise, um, how many people is allowed to come in. You can also have heat maps. You can uh, have like the secure sharing of recordings, just authorized people can uh, share the clips or the information of the videos that have been recorded. OK, and then also you have this more recording. This is a if there is no movement, there is no activity on the field of view of the camera. What the system is going to do is going to reduce the resolution of the camera in a way that the saving uh, capacity gets uh, amplified. OK. So uh, also it's integrated with access control systems and then is also available with uh, Android and iOS. OK. This system works on the cloud. So we have uh, in case that you use in our uh, you just in our own cameras. The good thing about these cameras is that they have. Um, hold on, let me just silence here. Uh, these cameras are smart cameras, so they have the analytics embedded and also the recording is embedded. As for the recording time, you can have 30 days, 60 days, and 190 days, and 120 days. So this is a key advantage because instead of sending the full stream of the video through the cloud and consuming all the bandwidth of the internet connection, what we do is uh, we're recording locally, and then in case that you want to access to the recordings, you just have to access through the cloud. So, so we are not uh, saving on the cloud or we are not using all the bandwidth to record it, okay? In case that the facility is a, has already third-party cameras installed, so what we will need to do is to have a connector, which is a server, OK, inside the server is where all the analytics and the recording uh, application will be installed. And this uh, server is the one that uh, we use it as connector with the cloud. So in order to access to all the recordings, you can access to any uh, smartphone, tablet or laptop. Uh, you will be able to access through the cloud to that connector. So also we will be able to access to, to all the recordings. So instead of sending all the information to the cloud, it will be saved locally on a server, okay? And we will just use the cloud as the connector, okay? Here I'm gonna show you a video on how the uh, uh, smart search tool uh, works.
Welcome to AvoWare. Today we're going to cover search. Search is a tool that allows us to search for specific events that may have occurred across one or multiple cameras. This allows us to search for things like the appearance of a person or a vehicle, uh, a line cross event where a vehicle or a person has crossed a specific virtual line that we've drawn, loitering events where a person or a vehicle may have been stationary for too long in one place indicating uh, something like an idling vehicle that may be outside of a loading dock or outside of an airport uh, or a person that may just be acting suspiciously in, a tr in an area that they should not be. We can also alert on sound detection and this leverages the onboard sound detection in our AvoWare cameras that can detect things like glass breaks, loud noises, smoke alarms, and many more audio uh, models that are being added with each release. So for example, if we were to create a line cross search, what we can do is we can choose what kind of objects we want to search for. Um, we can stick with any or go down to a specific person. This person can be uh, specified based on gender or based on the uh, attire that they're wearing in the top or the lower quadrant of their, their body. And you can combine both colors as well. Looking for people in uniforms or uh, based on a description that was given by a third party. We can also leverage an image. If someone has captured a cell phone image of this person or vehicle, we can upload that in order to do a search uh, based on, uh, on these detections. Then we can choose where we wanna do this detection. So this detection can take place, for example, uh, on a camera in a parking lot. Uh, it could also uh, happen inside of a building. So if we were looking for people that may have uh, been in front of a register, we can choose one or multiple cameras and then choose the line that we want these objects to be crossing in order to qualify for the detection. We can choose the direction of travel of this object. Uh, and in the case of something like a convenience store, if we're just looking for anyone that is walking out, as this person just did in this example, we can click to we can unclick the entering direction so that we're only looking for the direction of travel out the door and then we can choose the time period that we're searching for this can be anywhere from specific minutes down to uh, a block of time that may be days or, or hours uh, and in our case when we're just looking for the last 30 minutes worth of search we are presented with all of the events that correspond to our search criteria so in our case, we're looking for uh, people that are exiting. And if I highlight over that video, we're going to see the people that are exiting. I can click into this video to see it in greater detail. This will allow me to see not only the event that occurred, but the object within our floor plan as that user exits this building. Um, I, can, I can then click to add on, uh, act on that activity. Uh, but we can also see in our parking lot as a person was crossing that virtual line that we created. So this allows us to very quickly get to the events that matter to us uh, and, and then act on them. These different video clips that we have captured here can then be exported. So we can take the relevant information by clicking the plus and we can choose to share or save. So we can export this as an MP4. We can share this as a publicly accessible link. We can bookmark it so that these, these video clips do not get deleted by typical retention. Uh, and of course, we can also do similarity searches if we want to look for people that are similar to the objects that have been detected in these environments. Now, you're also present, presented with the ability to create a rule. We have a whole nother section dedicated to creating rules based off of uh, searches as well as other parameters. I implore you to check that out. Okay, another one of the solutions that we can offer is the uh, human temperature control. Okay, uh, so as you know, there has been a lot of solutions, especially from the Chinese, that have been uh, that have been uh, promoted. I mean, um, sometimes I mean they have not performed or have not worked as expected, simply because these solutions. I mean, um, I mean, it's very important for the people to understand that whenever you are screening the temperature of 
of a, of a person, uh, the gap of temperature or the threshold of the uh, temperature threshold that uh, you are analyzing is very, very low. I mean, you're talking, I mean, uh, we are trying to identify or to catch people between 38 and 38 uh, or 39 degrees. OK, Fahrenheit, this is Celsius. So I will say on the 90s and uh, no, 200s, uh, on the 85 to 100 Fahrenheit. OK, so that means that the the, uh, the temperature threshold is very slow, very low. So uh, in order to be very accurate, I mean, we always recommend to analyze one person at a time and a maximum distance between one to three meters away. OK, and then uh, with a very clear background or very steady background, uh, which cannot interfere on the temperature screening. OK, um, we have a solution that can work with uh, with access camera. It can go embedded, so it will be inside the camera. We will not uh, we will not need a server or we can work with FLIR and Mobotis. It will be the server based uh, version. OK, so um, this solution is very accurate always as long as the, the recommendations or the uh, yes, our recommendations are follow up. OK, here I'm going to show you a video on how the solution works. So the detection is quite fast in less than now one second or two seconds. I mean, the person is being detected. Has been set up to uh, to detect the person that is closer to the cameras. And then whenever someone exceeds the temperature threshold that we have set up for, then is when, uh, when it will trigger the alarm. So automatically here you can see that the person is with high temperature and then automatically will uh, will give the uh, the alarm. Okay, another one of the solutions that we also have is the uh, perimeter surveillance. This is especially for to uh, to monitor all the uh, outdoors of the uh, of the facilities. Let's say parkings, let's say access areas, or uh, especially parking slots. Okay, so here, I mean, uh, what we can do is we can uh, the, this system has artificial intelligence, so that means that we can auto classify uh, persons or humans and vehicles. And then also we can discriminate animals, vegetation, movement, or uh, light changes, shadows, and rain and raindrops. Okay, has multiple detection rules, so we can have like intrusion, line crossing, prowling, or abandoned object. Okay, this is very important, especially the abandoned object. Uh, this solution is compatible with all the IP cameras available on the market. And right now is uh, is integrated with all the main uh, with milestone, but also can be integrated very shortly with all the main VMS is available on the market. Here I'm going to show you a video on how the solution works. OK, so yeah, as you can see here, there is one person with uh, with the dog. The person is being detected, but the dog is not being detected. So it's very uh, um, accurate. I mean, as you can see, it's classifying all the objects that are in the field of view of the camera. seeing the videos I still see search tool you still so your blog on the, the search tool. yep should I do here? 
kita bongkar. Let's do something. Let's uh, lock out. If you don't mind, uh, I'm going to lock out and then we we'll lock in again. OK, uh, this is the only thing that I think uh, is going to work for now. So let's go on. Let's do that for uh, just one second. Okay, let me just upload again the presentation. So now, is it a different slide right now? Hi, Paul. Yep, I see your I see your first slide, the webinar solutions. Yep, the cover slide. Okay, and then uh, what you seeing right now, this one that it says HTC human uh, temperature control, or you are on the first one? Uh, I'm still on the first one. I don't know about anybody else. I think it's the internet connection. Let me just shut down my uh, my video stream and see if it improves. I see it. Paul Baraka may not see it because he's hard of saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess you guys know each other, huh? <laughs> no, I've just heard rumors. <laughs> OK, go ahead. OK, all right. So um, this is what the last solution that we have available for the uh, for the hospitals. This is the uh, transformer, as you guys know. I mean, in each one of the hospitals, uh, you need to have like a, a, a power generator or a substation. So here, I mean, this is uh, quite critical, especially when when shutdown might happen. So uh, here what we do is we are monitoring all the electrical components. And the uh, the idea is to detect overheating uh, uh, overheating uh, parts or overheating components in order to prevent from uh, failure. Okay, so with this solution, what we do is we are uh, 24 hours, seven days a week monitoring all the components, and then uh, what we do is we save on a database uh, the temperature uh, readings in a way that we can see how the comp that component is evolving. Uh, throughout the period of time. So whenever the, we see that the temperature is uh, increasing, we can anticipate to a uh, failure and then uh, uh, we can avoid major uh, problems. OK, also this solution has uh, one very unique uh, uh, rule, which is the uh, uh, simulation of radiation and distance. As you know, the energy dissipates with the space. So the uh, the farther the object is, the less energy the camera is able to retrieve. So what we do is we have kind of like a correlation rule that depending on how far the object is, it adjusts the uh, the temperature in a way that the reading is very accurate. OK, also all the recording is uh, is recorded on raw stream. That means that we are recording all the metadata on the image in a way that uh, you can do an offline analysis in a way that you can move the mouse throughout the image and you can figure out exactly the temperature of each one of the pixels on the image. OK. Uh, how, uh, forgive me for asking a question. How do you set the baseline? How do you know what the uh, the the ambient operating temperature, normal temperature is? OK. Uh, first of all, I mean, uh, we know from whenever we start the uh, the analysis, I mean, from the uh, end user or from the end client, we know exactly uh, the um, something went off. Yeah, we know exactly uh, uh, what is the uh, the operating temperature of that component. OK, so uh, we know what is the minimum, uh, what, what is the uh, right temperature that, that the that component should be working on. And then whenever we are exceeding that temperature, that is when we are triggering the alarm. OK, for example, right now in the US, we have a big project with uh, 
substations, and then we are monitoring. Uh, this is over 1,000 uh, substations ar ar across the country, and then uh, we know that, for example, it has to be uh, the the temperature of those components has to be on a temperature threshold. So whenever it is on top of that, that means that uh, in the very short term, that component is going to have a failure and it might interfere on the performance. Okay, uh, and then. Um, Whenever we uh, we calibrate the system, so we know exactly you know, the way that the thermal camera or radiometric camera works. It takes the maximum and the minimum temperature of the field of view of the of the camera, and based on that, it gives a different color uh, to depending on the temperature. That is the reason why you see different colors on the image. The red ones are the uh, or the darker colors are the cooler ones, and the lighter ones are the warmest. So. This is how the uh, thermal uh, imaging works. I mean, it takes the maximum and the minimum temperature of the of the image, and based on that, it gives assigns one color. Okay. Thank you. This, uh, these are some of the uh, key clients that uh, we have been dealing with. For example, in the US, we have implemented with the FBI the VMS for the forensic uh, analysis. Also, the cybersecurity system has been installed with them. On the NATO headquarters, we have installed the uh, human temperature control on the access control. Also, this is a uh, ROTA is a uh, NATO military base, is a US and a Spanish military base in the south of Spain. So here what we do is we do all the perimeter surveillance on the uh, military base, on the Navy base, and also on the Air Force uh, base. And then also we are in charge of uh, doing all the all the all the surveillance on all the navy bases in Spain. Okay, on the oil and gas we work with companies like Saudi Aramco, which is the largest oil and gas company here, uh, well, in in the in the world. And in Spain we work with Repsol and Tepsa, which are the the two largest oil companies here in Spain. Critical infrastructure, so we have the Madrid International Airport. We do all the perimeter surveillance. We do the TRIO nuclear plant, which is one of the seven nuclear plants that we have here in Spain. We do also the perimeter surveillance. On the uh, Valencia, which is the largest uh, traffic uh, container traffic uh, port in the Mediterranean, is, uh, is the largest port here in Spain also. We do all the all the surveillance, not just inside the port, but also on the anchor area. On telecommunications, we do projects with AT&T in the US, it is a lot in the Middle East, Hitachi in the US, Facebook in the US, Telefonica is uh, LATAM and Spain, and Portugal Telecom is on Portugal also. And then from hospitals, so we have done, uh, we have two projects on the Scandinavian countries in Sweden. So we do, we have implemented the VMS on on those two uh, hospitals here, sewing. And then um, as for uh, distributors, we work with Anixter and ADA. We and ADA we have global agreements. And then uh, also we uh, work with uh, Incomex uh, and where the scan source, which uh, what has been absorbed by or acquired by Incomex, Ingram Micro in uh, Europe. Uh, Elco in Eastern Europe, uh, Compact, Compass in uh, Italy, and then CCTV is uh, in uh, in Spain, and Psychotronic is in Saudi Arabia, and these are some of the key installers that we uh, we work with. Uh, I don't know, like Securitas, G4S, uh, Prosegur, Stanley, AT and T, and and so on. So this will be pretty much the uh, all the um, different solutions that we can offer to the. Uh, hospital industry. So here you have my contact details. Also, in case you want to test or you want to have a demo of any of the solutions that we just uh, presented to you, you can access to this, uh, uh, this uh, link here, which is grecom.com uh, for demos, and then uh, you can request a demo. And then uh, also it's very important for you to know that uh, the price of the licenses includes the setup, configuration and fine tuning. So that means that uh, until the solution is not working as expected, uh, we, we will not uh, we will not stop uh, working on it. So 
uh, this is kind of like a turnkey uh, solution for all the clients that uh, work with us. Any questions that you guys might have? Um, no, I found it very informal. I, I, forgive me because I, I, I arrived late, but to what extent do you um, get involved in the IoT realm? Oh, um, you mean like uh, in a way that uh, the artificial intelligence, how smart the system it is? Well, the IoT is Internet of Things, you mean the, how we can uh, send all the events through uh, emails or uh, SMS or WhatsApp? Is, is that your question? Uh, 5G or um, do you have those capabilities as well? Yeah, um, all the events can be uh, can be uh, sent or can be uh, exported uh, through uh, emails or through uh, SMS or through uh, WhatsApp messages. OK, so for instance, imagine that we have like uh, an alarm on a parking lot or we have an alarm on the entrance of the hospital. I mean, that event, uh, it can be configured to be sent just, uh, directly to, for example, the security manager or to the person which is responsible of the control room at that time. So all that all that information can be besides being recorded on the uh, VMS or besides recording on the recorder NVR we can also forward straight to the decision-making person in a way that they can act uh, immediately. Okay. And then uh, on the uh, kind of internet connection, depending, I mean, for example, if the image that we're gonna uh, export is a thermal image, which is a quite low resolution, in most cases, 320 by 240, uh, we don't need we don't even need five uh, five G or four G with three G that should be enough. In case that we need to send uh, kind of like a high resolution image, definitely we will need a five G or four G. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. What I will do is I will send you a copy of the presentation just for you in case that you want to review it. And then in case that uh, you want to go more in deep in on any of the solutions that we propose. Uh, here you have my contact details so you can reach me directly. And then uh, for any information that you might need, uh, please uh, feel free to contact. Alvaro, thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending and um, let's keep in touch. Okay. Very okay. good. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Take care.